In this session we're going to look at formatting our output from our previous tutorial. Currently we have an all passwords PHP script which will connect to our database, query for all the users, return this query and store the results in results and then we run an output for each and echo that back to the user. But what if we wanted to use some HTML commands to format the output? We want to develop this a little bit further. So what we might do is actually create a new file and we'll call it HTML all passwords dot PHP. Now in this method we're going to use a lot of the other ones so we still need to start with our PHP open we need to include our functions which holds our connection function and we're going to run the same query but we're going to work on the output so I'm just going to take this section and place it in here and in the functions you notice that this is our logon function to a database called LDAP and we're logging on as the root user with no password and we have our connection down here to try and also our error if we don't connect correctly. So let's get back to our HTML file. So currently we've got the connection, we've got our query that works and we want to start developing now our HTML output. So what we might do is actually close the PHP now, so question mark and the sharp arrow, and then we can actually start our HTML. But in doing so, I'm just going to put a little command up here so we know that we're in our HTML development of the output. So this way we know that below this line here, this is all HTML. And we're going to switch in between HTML and PHP when we need this. And then we'll have a look at the output. So the first thing we need is the head file. Oh, sorry. Uh, open the brace. We need the head. But inside the head you have your title. So it's still, once again, um, basic HTML. And in here we will put outputting using HTML. So we know what that is. And we will come back and put a link in here for our CSS. But first of all, we want to start with our body. So we need to come back here. And I'm going to move back and open our body tag. And then we've got our closed body tag below. I'll just move that in to line that up. So we know that what appears on the user's window happens between the body tags. So we want to try to display the information. And we're going to do this by actually displaying the information using a table. So we need to start with our open brace and we need to declare that we're going to start a table. And we need to close this. Now with the table we're going to have our table row which is TR and underneath that and before the end of the table row we're going to have our table header which is TH. In our table header we're going to have user username and you can have these as whatever you want because when the query is run, our SQL is run in our database, it doesn't return the field headings so we need to put these in as the um, table headers. So we've got username and then we'll have at the end of this one so we've got the table header and then we're going to have another header and this one's going to be the password so usernames and passwords so we'll just plural those and that closes off our header part of our table. So now what we want to do is display the results from our database. So in here I'm going to just put a comment and put display the results from the database. And so in this section here we're going to slip back into our PHP. So we're going to declare the PHP. So once again we're going to open up a PHP tag and we're going to do some results for this. Now what we want to do is for each now what this means is for each record that has been returned from our database because when we query this it's going to return a table and the for each will cycle through that table and remember that it's got lots of rows for each record and then we have the fields going down so it's saying basically for each result so each dollar sign result what we want to have this is is as rows so we know that it's the rows so look at the table that's been returned and split this up as a row and deal with them as individual rows 
So then what do we want to do with these individual roads? Well, we want to output some information to the user. So we're going to echo. And we're going to echo some tags. So once again, we need a table row tag. Then we want to echo the table data. And in particular, what table data we want to show. And we're going to use a full stop for concatenation. So it'll echo this out one line. So we've got the table data. So the when the browser interprets it, it knows it's table data. And we need to declare what data it is. So we're going to use dollar sign row. So we're looking at the individual record that has been returned. And we need to then use a square bracket and declare, well, what field are we looking at? Well, we're looking at user name. And you don't need to worry because when the PHP is compiled by the Apache server, it doesn't actually give you your field names back to the end user. That way they can't get an insight into your database. And we'll have a look at that before we finish this tutorial. Then I want to concatenate on the end of that some close the table data part. And then I want to open up another table data because this one's got to actually hold our passwords. So once again, we're going to use the dollar sign row because we're still on the current row and we want to use the user password so once again square bracket and these are the field names from our database here and then on the end of this I just need to close off the table data again and put a semicolon on the end of this the last thing we need to do is close off the table row. So I need to echo and then put the table row, close table row, and place a semicolon. So you could do this all in one line, but it's much easier to see. We open up the table row. So think of the header being set here at the top. So we should have username and password. And then for each record returned from our database, place the username, then the table, uh, the username and then the password in a table as we go down. And that will let go all the way down. And then we need to close off our PHP like so. And then once again, because we've opened a table, we need to close the table. We can then close the body tag and I'll just move this up. And that concludes our HTML document. So what we're doing is actually outputting the information using HTML. So let's have a look at this in the runtime state. So we're going to go have a look at our HTML, so I'll hit on play. I've already got a web browser open from last time, so we'll just go back a section, just refresh. You'll notice now we've got a new all passwords PHP. We'll just run this. We've got a quick little error. We just need to close our table data here to match up our open table data, close table data, then we open table data again, close table data, then we close off the table row. So let's just save that and try this now. Go back up and refresh. And now we can see the table still appearing, but we're using HTML now to control this. So let's go quickly make a CSS sheet for this. So to do this, we need to go back in and we need to create a new file. And once again, we're just gonna call this um, global Dot CSS. So this could be for our entire website and click on OK. You'll notice I have a little slightly different icon and we need to link our HTML passwords to our global CSS. To do that we need to place this up in the between the closed title and the closed head and we're going to put in a link now and this is going to link to a hyper reference, hypertext reference and it's going to be to the file. So because it's in the same folder, we don't have to do any pathing, but we're going to global, global CSS. And its relation is going to be a style sheet. And we can close off that link. So this links our global CSS back to our HTML document, and then we can work on some CSS styling for our table. So let's go do some global ones. So we're going to be dealing with the table. So we're going to use the CSS table tag. So any table that we declare in our HTML document, these will apply to. Anything that has a table header will apply to. Also any table data that's in there. You can individually apply different CSS styling 
two of these, but we're just going to use a global sort of one. So we're going to have a look at a border, and we're going to look at um, border collapse to bring it in against each other. So the border columns are up tight against the last field, or the largest field, and we're just going to collapse that place a semicolon. We're going to set our text color and in this case here we're just going to have a simple black. You can have any color you like there and you can use the RGBA if you want to in this case. Now we can apply a border to our table and we're going to have one pixel. It's going to be a solid line and once again it's going to be black. You can have a different color if you like. So these are all the properties that are going to apply to our table. So let's just save this, go back up, refresh, and now you can see the borders being applied and our cascading style sheet working. So let's just change this a little bit more with a cascading style sheet. Let's add another hover on to this. So we're going to look at the table rows and we're going to add a hover through our CSS. And what we're going to do is change the background and we'll change the background color and we'll just make that a, a sort of a light colored gray. So we'll just go hashtag F5F5F5, which is a fairly standard sort of color, with a semicolon on the end. We'll save that. Now refresh our page. Shift refresh. Now you can see as we hover over each record, the background changes to a light gray. So it helps the user know which record they're focusing on with their pointer. As I said before, we can have a look at the information being passed back to the user from the PHP querying our SQL database and Apache constructing the web page for the user to view. If we go down and view page source, you'll see that the information, the HTML has come back through, but no querying information is here. You cannot see what the field names are and what we're directly accessing the database for. So in this tutorial, we've used HTML to output the information back to the user. We've integrated HTML with PHP. We've applied a style sheet to control the output of our table and to give it some rollover effects for our end user and had a look at what information is actually sent back to the user and how it can securitize your database.